Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today, we are taking a look at the new version of the Stable Diffusion Forge Web UI, which is now known as Stable Diffusion Forge Web UI Neo. This forked version picks up right where the original Forge left off, keeping things lightweight and focused on performance. If you're starting from scratch and need to get this installed, I've already put together a video that walks you through the entire process, and I'll have that link for you down below. For this video we're going to get into the fun stuff, which is getting the WAN 2.2 video GGUF models running inside the user interface. I will say, it can be a little tricky to get everything set up correctly, which is why I wanted to make this guide for you. Using the Light XTV WAN 2.2 Lightning LoRa, I was able to generate short 3 second video clips on my RTX 4050, which only has 6 GB of VRAM in under 10 minutes and in just 4 simple steps. Now if you're working with a card that has more VRAM, you can expect to see much faster generation times, especially if you go through the process of getting Sage Attention installed with your local setup. And for my patrons, I wanted to make this process even easier. I've put together a special one-click Windows installer that you can find over on my Patreon page. This installer takes care of everything automatically. It installs the Stable Diffusion Forge WebUI Neo. It sets up Python 3.11, gets Sage and Flash Attention with Triton working for Windows, and it even downloads all of the necessary models and puts them right into their correct folders. It's everything you need to get up and running with just a single click. Don't forget to like and smash that subscribe button so you don't miss out on more great AI content. Alright, so before we fire up Forge UI Neo, the first thing we need to do is get all of our models downloaded and placed into the correct folders. I'll have a link to a full written guide with all the download pages for the models you'll need right down in the description. First up is the main WAN 2.2 GGUF model. For that, we'll head over to the Quantstack Hugging Face repository. From here, you need to decide if you're going to be doing text to video or image to video, and I'll have links for both to make it easy. Once you're on the page, find the Files and Versions tab. Go into the Low Noise folder and you'll see a few different quantized versions of the model. In my testing on a 6GB RTX card, I found that the 3K SGGUF model gives pretty decent results, even though it's a lower quant. Of course, if you have more VRAM to work with, I definitely suggest trying one of the larger quants as you'll likely get even better quality. Next, for our clip model, we're going to the City96 UMT 5XXL Encoder GGUF Hugging Face page. Here you'll want to grab the 5K MGGUF clip model, which is going to help us keep VRAM usage down during generation. Then for the LoRa's, you'll go to the WAN 2.2 Lite X to V page. Make sure you pay attention here and grab the LoRa that matches what you plan to do, either text to video or image to video. Just navigate into the Files and Versions tab and download one of the four-step LoRa models. And finally, for the VAE, you can find the WAN 2.1 VAE model over on the Comfy org. Comfy UI Repackaged Hugging Face page. Once you have everything downloaded, we can move the files into our Forge Neo UI Models directory. This is pretty straightforward. Just drag the WAN 2.2 GGUF model into your Stable Diffusion Models folder. The UMT Clip GGUF model goes into the Text Encoder Models folder. The LoRa goes into the LoRa folder. And the VAE model gets placed in the VAE folder, which is inside the Comfy UI directory. After that, you're all set to start up Forge UI. When you get the Forge Neo interface loaded up, you'll notice it looks a lot like the standard automatic 11.11 UI, just with a few new additions. To get the WAN video models running, you first need to go to the UI presets in the top menu and select the WAN option. After that, we can select our models from the dropdowns. For the main checkpoint, select the WAN 2.23K SGGUF model we downloaded. Selecting the VAE and text encoders is a bit different here, as they both share the same drop-down menu. In the VAE text encoder selector, you need to select the UMT5 GGUF clip text encoder, and you'll also select the Flux VAE model in that same list. Now look for the Diffusion in Low Bits selector drop-down and choose Automatic FP16 LoRa. 
This is going to help run the Loras more efficiently, especially on cards with less VRAM. You can leave the rest of the settings up top as they are since they're already optimized for your hardware. Moving down to the generation settings, you can copy the settings I have here in the video. For the sampling method and schedule type, I personally like to use Euler and SGM Uniform, but you should definitely experiment with other options to see what works best for you. For the number of steps, we're going to set this to 4, which takes advantage of that light X to V LoRa to really speed things up. Next, set the resolution for your video. Just remember that the higher you push the resolution, the more VRAM it's going to use which will also increase your generation time. After setting your resolution you can decide on the number of frames. The WAN 2.2 model can typically handle a maximum of 81 frames, which comes out to about a 5 second video, but for this demo, I'm just going to use 49 frames to create a 3 second clip. Make sure you set the CFG value to 1 as this is required for the light X to V LoRa to work correctly. For the shift value, you can set that to 5. Near the bottom of the UI, you'll see the Never Oom Integrated Settings tab. Make sure to set UNet to Enabled and VAE to Enabled. This will help offload as much as possible to your system RAM which can really lower VRAM consumption. And last but not least, it's time to write your prompt. This is also where you'll apply the LoRa. To do that, just go into the LoRa tab in the submenu and click on the Light X to V LoRa you downloaded. Make sure it's the right one for your task, either text to video or image to video. When you click it, you'll see the LoRa tag appear in your prompt box, which means it's active. From there, just finish writing your prompt and when you're ready, hit generate. On my RTX 4050 with 6 GB of VRAM, generations usually take between 4 to 10 minutes. You do have to be careful with the settings because even small changes can cause you to run out of memory which is the issue I was having when I first tried to run this setup. You can also use these same exact settings for image to video. All you have to do is switch to the image to image tab, upload your picture, and then make sure you change the checkpoint model to the image to video version and swap out the LoRa for the image to video light X to V LoRa. And that's really all there is to it. It takes a few steps to get set up, but once you have it configured, you can start creating some really interesting video clips right on your own computer. As I mentioned at the start, if you'd rather skip this entire manual installation and setup process, I do have a one-click installer available over on my Patreon page that takes care of everything for you automatically. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.